It is Friday, May 12th, the morning after the night before, which was semifinal two of Eurovision 2017. And there was one big shock elimination, Estonia. Should we talk about it? <laughs> Let's do this! That's right, Coit and Laura were singing Verona, and sadly, once again, there is a tragic ending. We did not expect this. We need to go around and say why we think they were eliminated. I'll kick this off by saying, I love this act. I think they should have gone through, but I can see that some people may have viewed it as a little cheesy. Coit was trying to add some charisma and be less of a potato, and as a result, he was doing things like this and kind of his Elvis expressions and his, you know, the sensuality seemed forced. The playfulness seemed a little forced and cheesy. I definitely agree on that one. I think where it was meant to look sort of like broody and, you know, kind of kind of that, it's now turned into a meme where it's like, Coit is looking and doing blue steel or something to the yeah. camera. And you know, that, that does kind of work, but for the drama they were trying to sell, it wasn't right for what it was. And, you know, we, I think the thing that we maybe had missed in the build up to it was, that first run through he did was so terrible that actually yeah. any improvement was probably going to be better. And maybe that's why we thought, oh, Estonia will be fine then. Um, that being said, I still would like to see it in the final. I don't think I'll ever recover. This is just so <laughs> deeply painful. I mean, semi-final one had countries which didn't advance. With, and then this, it is almost too much for me emotionally. I will have to add, though, that I think that when things like this happen, we try and look for answers and search for clues and deconstruct what could have happened. Actually, it was a fabulous performance. If, any, if there was any issue for me, it was that Laura's microphone failed at the very start. And that can just, it, it can just kind of tip you over the edge because you can't, if you can't hear yourself, you're already singing in the wrong key. So that was a, that was a major issue. She did recover. She did bounce back. Yes, Coit was adding a bit more charisma, but he's been criticized for the lack of it. But people never really understood that Verona is supposed to be sort of ice frozen cold. It's a bittersweet love song. And there are moments when you know, there's that frozen distance. This is really unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. And the, the fact that the mic was not working is a very big issue. And I feel like Estonia needs some kind of compensation. Obviously, you can't put them in the final because you can only have 26 songs. But certainly for next year, I don't know, maybe they need a reduced fee for entry or something because it is not fair that they're at three minutes of her life. She will never get back. It is marred by that moment. Later in the performance, they did touch each other. There was a big surprise coming and they finally touched each other mm -hmm. during that bridge, adding that kind of romanticism we've been craving showing that yes there's distance between lovers but there's also closeness honey and that was nice to finally see yeah and you know what had they advanced one would have said that oh that was what pushed them through obviously they haven't come through so now we're thinking oh is that what held them back this you know it's just an unfortunate series of events another thing i'll have to add is that i think this is a testament that promo tours do work yeah. and you know Lloyd, um, Coit, <laughs> and, <laughs> Coit and Laura were absent from all the promotional shows and we thought the strength of their performance would push them through. Well, perhaps, you know, revised thinking suggests yeah. that they should have at least attended a few of those parties. You can't just do Verona, you've got to do London, Amsterdam, Tel Aviv. But on the flip side, Riga. Jacques, Jacques Houdet didn't do any, did he? And he did qualify, so that's kind of, you know, it, it, it depends really. I don't know why they didn't do it, because obviously they're both actually beloved by the Eurovision fandom yeah. at the end of the day. They're former Eurovision stars. You are almost, by that point, entitled to be, you know, you can go to these events and you will be cheered no matter what. Um, I just think that, yes, the microphone failed, but was that really... It, I think it, it set it, the yeah, wrong tone exactly. for her, though, but for know, her mentally and her yeah, performance, she couldn't yeah, give her full self because it takes time to recover from that. And it didn't fail on the other 18. You know, it was just hers in isolation. Yeah. So... No, it of is all things hard. to mess up, not turning on someone's mic. At I mean, it's just such a, it's yeah. a very basic bitch moment for the EBU <laughs> or whoever was in charge. I just feel like if, you know, if it's maybe Estonia should have complained and said we want to go again, and obviously yeah. you only have True. kind of one song to get that complaint in. But I'm sure that there is a rule somewhere within the Eurovision rules that would have allowed them to do that. No, perhaps it was raised and that was declined. Um, but, you know, we have seen in the past that songs have been allowed to go to get, again because of technical problems. Greece obviously had the yeah. backing vocal where their mic wasn't turned on. But that was jury. It, it wasn't live. It wasn't live, but... 
I, again, Spain in 2010 or the stage invasion. It yes. can happen, I, yes. I suppose. But I have to say, though, even with all of that in the mix, times two, this is one entry that I thought would have sailed into the top five of the oh, Eurovision yeah. Musically final. alone, even without yeah. the staging, she could be singing in a box it should go through. This is one of the most played songs on my iPhone. Oh my it will God. continue to be. But now Verona takes on a properly tragic quality, so it kind of adds to the mystique of it all. This will go down as a fan favorite, I have no doubt. Ever. I mean, yeah. of all time. Shakespeare is timeless and so yes. are Coit and Laura. I think that it's interesting because obviously it does have that 80s kind of vibe to it. I mean, some people have said it's dated, but then you think, well, we were saying that as a positive in a way in the end for yeah. Mikhail Spack last year. So I don't know where it's coming from. I think it's telling that the, all three Baltics didn't make it in at the end of the day as well. So that's... That is something that is a surprise, really. And that we will discuss in another video, which mm. we will film right now. In any case, that's what we think. What do you think? Did Coit and Laura deserve to make the final? Does Verona have a tragic ending for you? Let us know here on Weeby Blogs. Oh, we already get a teaser of what our readers think. I mean, it's just been flooded with comments on uh, lots of our posts. But please do keep adding them. Let's find new lights. Let's solve this mystery. Um, <laughs> please share so other people can add their thoughts too. Yes, absolutely. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Fie on you voters, fie on you. <laughs>